In this video, we break through across the pond to identify vintage machine-made European marbles. Not the German handmade swirls, that's another discussion. But machine-made marbles from Europe. I hope you enjoy the show and thank you for watching. Machine-made marbles have been produced nearly all around the world in the 20th century. And there are even a few accounts of defunct marble manufacturers from South America. Most collectors are familiar with many of the North American and Asian style of marbles, but here we focus on marbles that are European in origin, specifically marbles produced in the Netherlands, Czechoslovakia, England, Germany, and France. Our story begins in the post-World War II Netherlands with a safety glass company from Amsterdam known as NV Veliglas. Did I say that correctly? Hi, Steve. Yeah, it's Dutch, so it's pronounced Glass. Okay, my Dutch bird friend, I'll try to keep that pronunciation in check. And just a disclaimer here, the information I'm sharing for this video is really a collective of current knowledge for European machine maids, and we'll have to treat this video as a work in progress. Unfortunately, the destructive events of World War II has left a lot of the documentation and clear historical information shrouded in a bit of mystery. The opinions here are about as accurate as I could muster and are likely to change and refine over time with new discoveries and continued research. All right, so let's dive into some Velik glass examples. They were known to produce two types of swirls, and here's a spread of their most common model. These are the clear and transparent types known to collectors as wire pulls. The examples shown here are from the Ron Buhl collection out of Switzerland, and it shows a complete overview of their color palette, which runs a near full spectrum of colored glass from clear to white to a deep purple and many different hues in between. There's no straight up black glass from what I can see. The main line of production for this company was the manufacturing of safety glass for automotive windshields, for example and it was made from imported float glass. The manufacturing of the marbles came a little later in the company's timeline, and it was a way to make good use of their scrap and end cuts from their mainline products. Wire pulls can be defined as having one or more continuous unbroken swirls that weave their way through the matrix of the marble. The swirls will often rise to the surface, take a sharp turn, and dive back down into the base of the, of the marble. The motion of the swirls is typically very busy. Most wire pulls can be separated into three distinct types. The type ones have a clear base with one opaque white swirl of glass closely paired with a translucent swirl of another color. They are typically uh, very tightly traced. Many of these marbles show a very flattened, compressed ribbon work and can resemble those tapeworm specimens that you might have seen in the, a biology lab. And on rare occasions, the colored swirl will take its own path through the marble, completely separate from the direction of the white swirl, as shown in this example here. And check out these very hard to find and collectible, we'll just call them fancy type ones, in which the white swirl is replaced by a colored swirl. Usually it's an egg yolk or yellow color. And some extremely scarce types will have a base color that is slightly tinted, such as this example from the Nicholas Roy Reynolds collection. The type two wire poles are an entirely different animal. They'll have a transparent colored base. Sometimes that base can lean towards a more cloudy, translucent texture. And they're complemented by opaque white swirls. These marbles appear to have a higher quality glass to them and they're probably earlier than the type ones and threes and some of the cooler ones have a pattern that resembles sort of like a human skeleton those white ribbons have a bony look to them and you can almost make out what looks like rib cages and other human <laughs> human body parts it's not uncommon to find these in shooter size uh, probably around seven eighths of an inch just like really uh, almost all of the velic glass have a look at these little bug eye type field marks that are on some of these type twos. These marbles actually have a symmetrical pattern to them. 
the swirl will start itself in a big loop on the left, and then it starts to crank its way through the marble with really tight compressions here. And it works its way through, and then it pops out the right-hand side, and it gives another loop. That's a type 2 trait. Here's another example where we start here, and I'm not going to follow it all the way around, but you'll see it ends in a, in a symmetrical type of a pattern there. And it's just something I'm noticing with the type 2s. Not all wire poles have solid, well-defined swirls. Some can show a more striated appearance, like some of these examples here. And this one could pass as an early alley agate. The type 3s are clear based with only one continuous ribbon. I give a little leeway to the ones that have some tint in the base. I've seen ribbon colors for type 3 with pure white, different hues of off-white, blue, yellow, and orange ribbons. And you'll find examples with that tapeworm appearance as well as that eerie skeletal look on type 3s. A few other observations for the orange, red, and yellow colored wire pull swirls. These will wildly fluoresce under UV lighting. That blazing orange color. And here's another unusual trait that shows up most often in the reds, but it can show up in any of the colors. You've got a super saturated crystallized glass that forms and it kind of rises to the surface. It's, uh, I think, very unique to welly glass. A lot of times the base on these has a vinegary kind of texture to them as well. One quirky little trait which also serves as an identification tip for welly glass swirls is that big fat bubble right in the middle of the base glass there. It's usually close to the center. Sometimes it's tucked away near a swirl, but you see this one right there. Right there. About one out of five of these swirls will exhibit this. And there's, there it is on the big blue one. And so that is the big, the big fat bubble. If you want to do a side-by-side -side comparison of Velik Glass to some of the other companies, we can do that. And so here is on the left, whoops, here on the right are shooter-sized wire poles. On the left, we have vitro caged and horseshoe type cat size they're going to be a little more sparse than the busier wire poles. If we look at player-sized wire poles versus player-sized horseshoes, there we have some vitros on the left. Here's a bunch of the cores on the left versus the wire poles on the right. The center row, these are the streamer the cores. And they're a little similar. The other types of accords are pretty identifiable just by their color combination. Here's some Liberties, some Halloweens, and a few others here. Just a side-by-side -side with the wire pole. Now, the, um, some of the older American manufacturers, the West Virginia Swirls, can get similar too. I've got, I picked out a bunch of Ravenswoods just to show you what they're looking like side by side with some of the wire poles. These are the busier type Ravenswoods. The ones that have the two color swirls are, can get similar looking. And then here are some busier alleys on the left. I'm not aware of any marketed items with the Velik Glass brand name on them, but here's a few examples of some packaging associated with Velik Glass. 
These items are brought to you by the Craig Comley and Ron Shepard collections. This box was made by the English Fairy Light brand and it's packaged by the Graham Brothers. And here's a very special piece, probably 1950s. And it's a happy birthday gift box with a fold out card. It's really whimsical. It comes with uh, 12 velvet glass marbles. And the artwork depicts those spotted European mushrooms drawn as little buildings and these elf-like little children having a sugary picnic. It's pretty cool. These marbles may be early versions of wire pulls. And here's another vintage piece with a Japanese motif that contains 16 wire pull marbles. All right, so let's move on to the opaque version of the velvet glass swirls. And some European collectors refer to these as Amsterdam swirls. And to be fair, some of the base glass on these can show a little translucency. The base color on these is almost always white or an off-white. Sometimes it has a little gray or a blue tint to it. And these are typically one or two colored swirls. And they can show a super busy pattern, just like the wire poles. And that Greek olive or raspberry purple shade that you see is pretty common and it shows up a lot in these pieces and it's often combined with green or blue or yellow. You're probably less likely to find these with orange or red glass and those colors will crystallize at the surface much like the wire poles. But they're probably more collectible and as a whole the opaque swirls are considered to be less common than the transparent wire pull types. These marbles can show very tight, well-defined lines that occur between the folds of the marble. And they'll have some scalloped patterns and some flames on some of the better ones. The glass quality is very bold. These colors, are, are they pop pretty well. Here's an example of one of the more translucent, foggy-based pieces. Some of them have, here's this green one has some of that. If you look, it goes deep into the base with a translucent or transparent green. I don't have the greatest sample size and these marbles are a little beat up, but the glass is probably a little softer than most of the American made marbles. And you have to realize that the, the raw materials that they used here are completely different than the American made marbles. The, this, here's an example of that crystallized red that comes up to the surface. This piece is special and has a nickname. It's called the Winnie. And it's named after Winnie Godin, I think is her, the pronunciation. She was a trailblazer in the research of these Dutch marbles. Before her, they were thought to have been German made. But you can see that sort of a two-tone blue on these, where it gets really dark and then really light. I'm going to lay over some better photos of some Winnie examples. For those with collector's mentality, you want to get the Winnie. Here's a small gallery of some more Winnie examples submitted to us by English and Dutch collectors, Nicholas and Jope. And just to show some more variations from a larger sample size, here's a running gallery of many of the opaque color combinations and patterns that are present in some of these opaques. These images are provided by several generous European collectors for your viewing pleasure. And I would say that the opaque styles would be most likely confused with alley agate and ravenswoods. So here's a short gallery of those examples for comparison. And in the name of science, we've got a comparison with some alley agates on the left, some opaque velvet glass in the center, and some ravenswoods on the right. And you'll notice this flame pattern on this velvet glass, which can be similar to the alleys here. Ron said that uh, Lawrence Alley sent prints to velvet glass to help them start up their machines. And 
there could be some evidence there. And here are some of the Ravenswoods, which can also be pretty similar. There was an awful lot of folks that helped pitch in for this video's content. I'd like to thank them all. Stay tuned for part two of the European Machine Made series. And thank you for watching.